Okay, so this is a quick tutorial for lab four sampling strategies. This is the lab handout that you have in Canvas. A link to it from there. And again, as usual, there's a little introduction. So I mentioned in class that what we're going to be doing in the lab is creating some sampling frames and sampling strategies to kind of experiment with the efficacy of different kinds of sampling strategies. So you'll see here under the procedures, there's a link to a sampling experiment that I created for you. And when you click it, it'll take a little bit, there'll be a little wheel that spins and it will load up here. Now the first thing I want you to do before clicking anything or freaking out about all of the stuff that's in here is read the model info tab at the bottom of the page. So you scroll down and click model info and I want to say that first if this doesn't load in whatever web browser you're using try a different browser I've had reports that it may not work in Safari but it seems to work in Firefox and I'm using Google Chrome here and it works fine for me so um, what I want you to do is to take a minute to read through some of this stuff now there's a lot of stuff in here that is a little too much information but certainly read the how it works and you can use the how to use it as a reference but I'm going to show you the basics of what's going on here okay so this piece of software that I wrote this in is called NetLogo and we'll use it again at least one more time in this class but it's a piece of software that you can create simulations or experimental computational models in and this is a really simple one that I created to just test different sampling strategies. So the way you use it, the very first time you open it and to reset if you've changed too many things, you just click this Start Reset Experiment and the screen will turn from black to brown. This is your sampling universe or the entire landscape. Yes, it's a big square, but it's parsed up already for you as a grid. Um, there is 50 by 50 grid lattice underneath this brown. So there's 2,500 landscape patches or cells. The net logo term is patches. So that's what I'll be using in the tutorial. Now, this one, two ABC, and then three is set up for you to be able to fairly quickly create different kinds of experiments. So very briefly, clicking number one, seeds the landscape with a bunch of artifacts and so you can see these little arrows you can kind of imagine them like projectile points okay or lithics or whatever you want them they're artifacts or whatever and right here this little slider sets the number so 500 is what i uh, the default is when i click this it puts 500 artifacts randomly around the landscape and if i think this is wrong i can click this little reset distribution they go away and now I can pull the slider up and say I wanted 700 and I can actually go here and very precisely make it 700 artifacts and click it and there we go now we have 700 artifacts on the landscape so just by moving this one slider we can change the number of artifacts and we want to do this to set up a distribution it can be a totally random distribution of artifacts like this it can be very dense, up to a thousand artifacts, or it can be very sparse. You could have two artifacts on a landscape if you wanted to. The point is you want to create an artifact distribution that you think is reasonable um, simulation of what a real artifact distribution would be like. So a random spread is cool, but most artifacts are clustered, meaning people are doing something in a particular area and they deposit artifacts in that area. So let me hit reset uh, to blank it out. And I can create artifacts by sliding this artifact clustering um, slider. I can create clusters of artifacts by sliding it so that it's more than zero. When it's set to zero, it will be totally random. But if I set it to any other number, let's just set it to 10, um, then those 600 artifacts are going to be distributed into 10 different clusters. So there we go. And you can see there are actually 10 different clusters. And you may be wondering about this down here. The universe doesn't have perfect boundaries. So if anything is 
hits this end, it comes off the bottom. Like it continually cycles over and over again like Pac-Man. Now, you may be wondering, well, these clusters are pretty small. How do I make bigger clusters? Well, we do that by changing the dimensions in number of patches. So by default, the clusters are five patches by five patches square. I can pull the X axis to, let's just pull it to, let's say 10. And I just want to do this so you can see what that would do. It makes wider than taller patches, right? They're wider than they are tall, twice as wide as they are tall. 10 patches wide by five patches uh, tall, and the artifacts are distributed within randomly within those clusters. And if I want to make it the opposite, let's just make it this way, 15 uh, tall by 10 wide, and oops, I should reset, and then you'll see, like so. And I want you to realize that every time you do it, they're gonna, clusters are going to be in different places. So let's say we like this one, but we want it to have some small number of artifacts in all of this rest of the area. What we can do is reset our clustering to zero. Don't hit the reset artifact distribution, but let's set a small number of artifacts, let's say 100 artifacts, um, back randomly, right? We can superimpose on top of whatever is there simply by changing these numbers and hitting that button again. And now we have a small number of other artifacts sort of randomly between the clusters. And to me, this looks like a pretty realistic um, assemblage on a, on a real site. A couple of activity area clusters and then some random flakes here or there. That's pretty good. So that's the first thing we need to do is set up our artifact distribution until we feel happy with it. Next, what we're going to do is simulate like having some artifacts on the surface and some buried. And so we have this slider that says 75.75 and hide some artifacts and show artifacts. What this is going to do is randomly hide 75%, uh, sorry, 25%. It's going to hide, there we go, 75% of those artifacts. So let's do it like that. Every time we tip it, it'll hide some other percentage. So if 75% doesn't seem like enough, it seems like too many artifacts on the surface, we can raise it up to, let's say, 90. And then we raise it up to 95. Okay. So anyway, you hide some percentage of the artifacts, and you can reshow them by clicking on that. Oh, this is a little bug in the code. I'm going to have to fix this real quick. So I'm going to fix this before you guys use it so that it actually hides 95%. It looks like it's only hiding the last uh, set of artifacts that were added. So it's only hiding 95% of the 100 artifacts. So let's just change this real quick so that we get our little clusters um, like so do it this way 600 eh, close enough right and there we go so now hide some artifacts there now we're hiding 95 percent of them i'll fix that button so that it works the way that it should um, but what this does is now lets you have some knowledge let's say surface artifacts but also it's hiding from your view the artifacts which are buried right you can always reshow the buried ones by clicking the show artifacts and you can hide them again. This is useful just to help us reduce some bias from too much prior knowledge, right? So once we have our artifact distribution created and some proportion of them hidden, what we want to do is to select or set up a survey system, a sampling system, right? So we have our two system, uh, sorry, our two non-judgmental approaches, random and systematic, and then we have our judgmental, which is interactively selecting them. So I'll just show you what those look like. Here we have uh, on the random n, which is the number of survey patches, and we'll randomly pick those uh, 40 survey patches and distribute them around the landscape. And here you can see that the survey patches, the patches that are going to be sampled, are showing up in blue. 
So that's random, and again, as you change the number, it will make more or less of them. And if you want to remove your survey patches, you hit Reset Survey Patches, and you try again, you go, okay, I like 60. Um, now, the lab asks you to go no more than 50. That's your budget if you're gonna do this kind, right? So you can pick fully 50 random ones. That's one of the things that you should do, okay? And remember, every time you hit random, the computer is going to figure out where to place them. It's going to put them in different spots. So you may want to do the random survey just a few times to wrap your mind around how well it works. Um, let's keep going with the random survey patch, and I'll talk about these other in a little bit. At this point, you have your 50 units randomly separated. You can show your artifacts if you want, because the random one is, you know, there's really not a lot of bias in there. Um, you can click this little button that says count survey patches and artifacts and it tells you this is the total number of artifacts 704 remember because we did a couple of weird things up here with the distribution and it confirms that we only have 50 survey patches and then we can go to three display results and it calculates a whole bunch of interesting statistics for you um, it tells you the number of artifacts that were discovered 10 so uh, here the colors change Survey patches that you didn't find any artifacts turn red. Survey patches that found artifacts um, are shown in green. And then it counts the number that were found. So you found 10 artifacts in your 50 random survey patches. That gives you um, 7 positive survey patches and 43 negative ones. And it says you sampled a total of almost 2%, 1.92% of the landscape and you discovered 1.42 percent of all the real total amount of artifacts giving you a positivity rate of 14 percent so 14 percent of all survey patches were positive and then it does a little bit of math and the the uh, info tab tells you the exact math to extrapolate the number of artifacts from that positive sample of 14 percent finding 10 artifacts it calculates that, that it thinks, the algorithm thinks, that the entire number, the total real number of artifacts is 520, which is a difference of 184 fewer artifacts than really exist. Now, what's really interesting is you can hit Reset Survey Patches, and you can hit Select Again, another random sample, and then Display Results Again, and now, we have 16 artifacts discovered, extrapolated to 832, which is an overshoot of 128. Oh, interesting, right? And we can do this again a few more times. And what you'll probably see is that, oh, whoops, I didn't hit reset survey patches, is that each time you do it, you're gonna get a slightly different result. And sometimes you might get pretty close to the true number of 704. In this case, the extrapolation, positivity rate of 22%, and number of artifacts of 13 is going to extrapolate to 676, with a difference of only less than uh, 28 artifacts less than what is really out there. So that's really interesting. Down here in this little output window is all of these numbers set up so that you can paste them into a spreadsheet. And I'll show you exactly how to do that in a little bit. But what you'll want to do is Play around with this for a little bit until you get a sense of how you want to set up your experiments. Then you're going to hit reset, which is going to blank everything out, and you're going to set up your artifact distribution again. So let's firstly set up our um, random background scatter of some amount, like so. And then we're going to set up our clusters, uh, somewhere like 10 clusters. And we're going to give a goodly number, and I want my clusters to be a little bit smaller, like so. And there we go. And now we're going to hide some portion of it so we can do our random patch. And then we'll want to set up a grid. And the grid is uh, set up with these four sliders. The top are the spacing in the X and Y, so 10 patches between each one and the bottom are the offset from the lower left corner. So five up and five over for this lower left corner. And here it's useful because you don't know exactly how many survey patches were created, 
to take that and say, oh, it's only 25. I have a budget of 50 patches. I can go tighter than this. So we can reset the survey patches and we can, for example, we can make the, we can, let's go eight by eight and, oops, hit that. And then let's see, 36. Okay, so I still have a, a, an improved budget. I can go down one more. Let's see what that does. Reset survey patches, set them up seven by seven, count survey patches, 49. So that's really good. And then you can play around with the offset. So for example, if I wanted them to be starting in just in the bottom left corner, I can reset those to zero. And you can see the survey patches start in the lower left. So now I can do the same thing I did before which is display results and I can get positivity rate, number of artifacts discovered, and I can get my extrapolated count. And you can play around with these, you know, moving the grid around a little bit. Let's go three by whatever. Uh, reset survey patches, set it up again, and then display results. And we can see we get a different count, right? We can move them over if we want uh, multiple ways. So here's one thing that you can do. You can make a denser survey grid like this, or we can go back up to this and we can make a sparse survey grid. Let's say 14 by 14, like so. And what we can do is set up the grid like this. Then we can go up one and then hit set up grid. And we can go up one set up survey grid and then we can go back down one on this setup grid and now I've made bigger patches bigger survey patches but fewer of them hit the count I've gone over my target here but you know you can play with these numbers with the spacing until you get the right number of survey patches and you can do that and you can see we actually only got a positive hit over here and we get really bad <laughs> with this particular artifact distribution. But you can play around with that. Another thing that you can do um, with the systematic thing is to set up transects. And the way you do this is either choose the X or the Y dimension and set it to one. And then the rest of the spacing is set up here. And the offsets kind of work as normal, but whatever spacing you set to one, you want to set that to zero and there you have uh, a transect that starts right at the edge so if you, i'll just show you if you had this x offset to 21 it's reset you see it wouldn't do anything because it just uh, it would go off the end over here so we would need to set that even if you set it to one like that it won't do anything it needs to be set to zero and then it will set up your linear transects, right? And I say you can have, I think it's four or five transects. So here we have four horizontal transects. And you can do the same thing. Here you see you have a much bigger sample size, closer to 10%. And we get still not a very good estimate because of the linear nature of this. Now, if I wanted to set up my sample size the other way, again, I have to set that one y to one well, grid y to one and y offset to zero i can reset and i can do that so here i only have three times x for that spacing and then i can count that way um, if you want to get really clever you can do uh, you can set them up like something like this so you have three this way and then you can reset these and set up like two or three the other way. And so you can actually have a kind of a crisscross sampling strategy. This is a little bit crazy, we, but you know, it's not out of the, out of the unreasonable for a sampling strategy. And maybe that does better, who knows, right? Okay, so finally we have our interactively set survey patch. This is our biased or our judgmental sampling strategy. When we click this, the button turns blue. And as long as you've, the button is blue, we can actually tap anywhere. I'm just clicking my mouse button. And I can put my units wherever I want to put them. 
And again, I'm using my prior knowledge or my intuition. And here I'm just using the idea that if there's artifacts on the surface, there ought to be artifacts underneath, right? And if you click and hold, you can actually even just draw like, you know, units in a row. Now you're going to want to keep hit, hitting this. So I've got the 32 patches and I got another, uh, what is it, 18 patches. So I can put some more like this. I can put one over here. I can put one over here. I click that. I'm at 40. I have 10 more patches that I can choose. And then I can decide, okay, I'll just randomly put a few around. So I'm kind of doing a combined strategy. I've got mostly judgmental and a few just sort of random clicks. And I'm pretty close to my 50 there. So I'll hit display results. And wow, I'm way off. I'm overrepresenting in this particular case. Okay, so one last thing is that you want to make sure you click that again so that it turns back to light blue. Otherwise, you'll accidentally add survey patches. If you want to try combining more than one, you can do that. So again, we'll reset. What I can do is, for example, I can do 25 random ones. And then if I've tuned my grid properly, I can set up a systematic grid here. Let's just put this back to like 7 by 7 or 7, 7, 7 off from the corner. And I can add a, a regularized sampling grid to that. Count my survey patches, and I'm pretty good there. And display results. And now I have both a combined smattering of truly random or pseudo random in the background with a grid uh, every 11 by 11 patches. And you can see this actually did pretty well. So you have to design three survey sampling strategies. You have to have one random strategy, one system, uh, sorry, not random, one non-judgmental could be random could be systematic one judgmental and then a third one that you can design any way you want you can do another systematic you can do a combined or you can try to stratify in which case you'd have to click click that in yourself so you'd have to kind of try and be careful to do a regular grid manually by clicking you might be off a little bit on this side so for example here's a regular ish grid and then you can kind of go crazy drawing random samples all over here like so <laughs> or you can do judgmental or whatever like so so here we stratify the left side to be pretty much regular and the right side to be random and we would spend a little bit more time and care doing that but we can get some results and maybe we'll get a good result of doing that so when you're done, when you've set up, played around with, and then you've done your experiments, you can copy um, the text here in this. And I'm going to right click copy. And then over here, you can uh, open up a Google spreadsheet or any uh, other spreadsheet that you want. So I'm just uh, randomly opening up a Google Sheets like so. If I was smart, I would have had one already open up, but here's a blank one. And you can uh, wait for that to load up a little bit. And oops. So let's see. Um, okay, so what you want to do is just pick the upper left corner and paste those data in there. And then it's not going to go right into the cells. So you have this is highlighted. You go to tools, oh, sorry, data, um, split text to columns, and it will do it. And it does that because it puts, I put commas between everything. And you'll notice that it repeats the header every row. So uh, you can remove each subsequent row that has the labels in them like so because you only need just the top row to tell you the labels but this is the way that I designed the program and you have to live with it because that's the way I did it anyway you go through and you would delete out those things and you know I don't necessarily need all of the rest of this so I'm just gonna quickly um, 
delete the rest of the data. But you would basically get each experiment as a row, and then you have all your stats lined up over here. So you can see the number of survey patches, the number of positive survey patches, the number of negative, the percent positivity rate, the number of artifacts found, the percent of all total artifacts found, the extrapolated counts, the actual number of artifacts, and then the difference between the extrapolated and the actual. So it's a nice way to get a summary table of several different experiments. And then you can compare them and see which ones did the best, which ones underrepresented, which ones overrepresented, and which ones got closer and which ones got further away. So that's basically it. This is your data table that you'll want to um, present. When you have your sampling frame set up, you're going to want to take a screenshot. Your computer will have a different way to do it. Um, you can also right click on it and just hit save image as and you can download it. Uh, I'll just put it in my downloads folder. Name it something sensible rather than download.png. Um, but there it is. And you can see. You just want to save that for every sampling strategy that you do so that you have a record of what each one is. And when you do your spreadsheet, you might want to right click here, insert a column to the left, and then you can label this. This could be random, this could be uh, systematic, this can be judgmental, this could be combined, and this could be strat stratify, just so you know which experiment is which. Okay, I think that basically does it. So uh, hopefully that makes some sense. And remember, you have some help down here in the model info tab. It explains exactly what each of the sliders is and explains the exact procedure, just as I've shown you in this particular video.